The main perception in dentistry is that sugar and acids are the cause of tooth decay. The mouth is viewed as a battleground and strengthening the enamel with fluoride is the weapon of choice to fight this disease. This thinking is based on this acidogenic theory of decay, which was established by Miller in 1890. It is a very limited perspective, but it still provides the unquestioned basis of preventative treatment today. In this video, I will shed some light on the long overlooked moralistic view on the issue and why it could transform the way we look at dental health. Miller's acidogenic theory was adopted in the 1940s and became the dominant theory of dental decay that is taught in dental schools worldwide. It proclaims that the tooth decay forms in two stages. Stage number one is an attack on the enamel by acids causing decalcification and stage two is the disintegration of the organic component of the tooth. This is what it looks like. Sugar is consumed and metabolized by bacteria in the mouth. They turn into acids attacking and demineralizing the enamel causing tooth decay. Then the organic matter of the tooth is disintegrating. This narrow view looks at teeth as not being alive and unchangeable, ignoring the fact that teeth are vital organs and capable of resistance under the right circumstances. Teeth are alive and live in a dynamic relationship with the body. In fact, there is a proven connection between the gut and the teeth. This was established by Dr. Steinman, a dentist, and Dr. Leonora, an endocrinologist doing research in the late 50s. Their research confirmed a hormonally controlled fluid flow from the gut to the teeth. This flow is crucial for dental health. To better understand this fluid flow, let's look at the anatomy of a tooth. The tooth has three layers, the inner vital core or the pulp, the dentin and the outer surface, the enamel. Dr. Steinman and Dr. Leonora were proving that lymph flow was starting in the gut, making its way all the way up into the jawbone, from there into the roots of teeth, all the way up into the pulp, but it did not stop within the tooth. As we zoom in, we can see the dentin consists of tiny little tunnels, the dentin tubules. They stretch from the inside out. In healthy conditions, the fluid is working its way from the pulp through the dentinal tubules, all the way through the porous enamel. Like microscopic sweat, this fluid goes outwards and is acting like an internal toothbrush. The healthy tooth is continually cleansing itself and in a healthy state, dental plaque does not settle on the tooth surface. But this flow can be reversed and become inwards. The tooth becomes like a sponge, sucking in all that is in the mouth, like acids, bacteria, fungus and oral pathogens. At this point, bacteria and plaque can easily settle on the tooth surface, turn sugar into acid and cause decay. So what makes this fluid reverse and switch from healthy inside out flow to unhealthy outside inflow. Dr. Steinman and Dr. Leonora wanted to know what brings about and regulates the flow direction of the fluid. They found that there is a hormonal source for regulating this fluid. They were able to demonstrate that the activity of the parotid gland was directing the flow. It has a dual function. It is mostly known for excreting saliva into the mouth, but it also has a little known endocrine function of releasing parotid hormone. In healthy conditions, parotid hormone is produced and the flow is from the inside out. But if the parotid hormone is not produced, the flow is reversed. At this point, Dental plaque can easily accumulate and the acids from the bacteria are demineralizing the enamel of the tooth. They further found in their research that the hypothalamus 
is regulating the parotid gland to either produce or not to produce parotid hormone. It acts like a switch to activate the parotid gland. Depending on the food intake, the switch is on or off. Healthy and nutritious food activates the production of parotid hormone and the flow goes from the inside out, acting like a natural toothbrush. But sugary food stops the hypothalamus signal and diminishes the parotid hormone, ending or even reversing the flow inwards and the tooth becomes vulnerable to decay. Now we understand the principles of a more holistic view on dental decay, but why is this important? What difference does this knowledge make? Unfortunately, the dominating theory of Miller does not take any of this into account. In fact, the adoption of Miller's theory has marginalized any other model and deemed them fringe ideas. Let's evaluate current preventative treatments based on Miller's acidogenic model and what it has done to the way we look at dental health. Today, prevention is obsessed with strengthening the enamel with fluoride. Fluoride is seen as the holy grail in dentistry. It is in the water, in toothpaste and mouthwashes, when cooking food, in beverages, in varnishes, in dental floss and in fluoride treatments that are a big part of any routine dental clean at a dental office. It almost seems the ingestion of fluoride is unavoidable. This approach does not pay much regard to the neurotoxicity of fluoride and the implications of artificially changing the natural structure of enamel. Still, tooth decay is rampant, especially in the young. Miller's model has propelled an industry based on fluoride to enormous profits and the economic model of restorative dentistry thrived, while preventative efforts continually failed or were minimally successful. In light of Dr. Steinman and Dr. Leonora's research, the approach to brush twice daily with fluoridated toothpaste and drink fluoridated water, and even it is encouraged to avoid water that does not contain fluoride, have regular fluoride treatment at the dentist, brush your teeth after sugar intake, seems insufficient. We know that a well-balanced diet is beneficial not just for your overall well-being, but suddenly it also makes sense how it is contributing to our dental health. Dr. Steinman and Dr. Leonora provided a model that recognizes the importance of the long-ignored lymph flow through our teeth and how it is cleaning our teeth from the inside out. It clearly illustrates why good nutrition is the key to healthy teeth. I hope you enjoyed this video. On my website and on my YouTube channel, I provide more information on important dental subjects. I also offer private online consultations or written reports for clients who feel the need to discuss their personal dental concerns. Thank you for watching.